let's go over gaming distros today because there's one thing I think when you first get into Linux, you're constantly bouncing around to different distributions. And I got curious on a live stream and said, hey, what is the best Linux gaming distribution out of the box? And uh, it's a good starting point because I, I always say distributions don't matter, they're just a starting point. But if you're a gamer coming to Linux, what does that look like and, and where would be the best start? So let's discuss. This video is brought to you by UpCloud, the world's fastest cloud servers for the most business critical customers. Their in-house developed Max IOPS storage technology allows faster than SSD speeds, delivering up to 100K IOPS read and write. Sign up using the link in the description below to receive a $25 credit. All right, so most people know that follow the channel that I'm kind of a purist. I like to use the actual vanilla uh, distribution and then build everything on top of that. But I realized that's not for most people. Most people want kind of everything there out of the gate, or at least most of the way there. I, I think every single Linux distribution you need to customize to fit your needs. But let's talk about the ones that are pretty much all the way there for most people. So uh, there's really a couple distributions that I did in this poll. So right here, spoiler, Manjaro won it all with about 60 or so people in chat. Uh, and there's you know, probably about a third of those voting in this poll. But it gave me a good baseline to say, hey, here's kind of where the gauge is. And I totally agree with this poll. I think Manjaro is the absolute best, but why is that? Let's go over where Pop! OS would be the best for maybe you. So for me, uh, Manjaro I think would win every time out of the gate from a starting point, and uh, Pop! OS would win depending on your config. And really where Pop! OS shines is support for NVIDIA drivers. Now, most people realize like Ubuntu are like, hey, it bundles it in, doesn't it? And I'm like, yeah, it bundles the drivers in, but it's not active by default. Where Pop! OS, if you download the NVIDIA ISO of Pop! OS, those drivers are ready, they're rolling, they're running, everything out of the gate. Also, System76, uh, who, who basically makes Pop! OS, does some other customizations, which is fantastic. So covering Pop! OS first, I would say if you're an NVIDIA card user, it is absolutely my number one go-to because NVIDIA drivers can be a pain in Linux. Uh, just because uh, if you're on like Arch or a rolling distro, it can cause some issues. It can be a bit of a headache to install these. That's why I never recommend NVIDIA for any Linux user. I always say, get an AMD graphics card. But I realize some people have plopped down $600 for their graphics card and it's NVIDIA. And if this is you, well, Pop! OS is gonna be your best starting spot. And it's very well optimized for gaming. I've, I've installed Pop! OS, I've gamed on it, and it's a pleasurable experience out of the box. The only thing I'd probably knock Pop! OS over is I hate like the default theme. I don't like the desktop environment of GNOME. So in my uh, whole playlist where I say Windows to Linux and it's a first time user, I actually use Pop! OS in there, but I change the desktop environment and do a lot of customizations to Pop! OS to make it more Windows user friendly. And I think this is really cool, especially if you're an NVIDIA user, you can follow this guide. Uh, however, instead of installing like KDE, you probably would want to stay on GNOME as some people have reported uh, switching the desktop environment to KDE causes problems. But I'll leave a link in the actual uh, uh, title card here. You can click on it and then go to that video or that playlist that goes over the entire first time installation for NVIDIA card users coming to Pop! OS. Now, as far as let's say you don't have an NVIDIA card and you just want to game and have the absolute best performance out of the gate. Uh, for you, this is going to be an Arch-based distribution. So for this, Manjaro has the best starting point. It has all the customizations. It has a ton of packages already installed by default, and it looks very, very good. Uh, you can also choose your desktop environment. They have all these different types of spins 
of Manjaro to where you could use a window manager like me. You could start with KDE for more of that Windows-esque look or Cinnamon for a Windows-esque look as well as that's another really good desktop environment. Or you can go with GNOME like most Linux users where they're starting at, you know, because that's what Ubuntu runs at and some others. But overall, Manjaro just gives you so many options and it's very powerful. It's more powerful than Pop, Ubuntu, Debian, all these other distros out of the gate because it's running on Arch and it's a little bit more bleeding edge. So you get a lot of the packages faster, which is great, but also it can lead to some bugs. So I, I made a video specifically going over, hey, making Arch stable. Uh, and really it's, it's more of what not to do because it's usually the user breaking Arch uh, by doing some of those things. So if you're, you want to go the Manjaro route, definitely watch that video as it'll kind of just showcase case, what you should never do in a, an Arch-based system, which is what Manjaro is. But really, these are the two great ones. Now, in this poll, there was a couple other ones covered, and I wanted to touch on those real fast because I kind of made a broad uh, poll and just to kind of showcase what each uh, distribution has. And I wanted to make each distribution very different from the other. So uh, in the Debian branch, I think Pop! OS is kind of a no-brainer, a great starting point for everyone. In the Red Hat or Rail-based branch, I chose Fedora because this is like the desktop uh, distribution in this branch. And it does a really good job. However, this is more for business users, I think, because of uh, its starting point, because Red Hat's more geared towards enterprise users and those types of things. But you can game on Fedora. I've done it personally. The packages are very good. It is almost like a rolling distro, but very stable. I absolutely love where Fedora is. However, do I would I recommend someone gaming on it? And the answer is no, not with these other options, just because I think it's um, a little bit uh, tedious getting out of the gate, adding the proper repositories to download stuff. But it's not to say it's bad at gaming, because it is. I've, I've optimized it, and it does turn into a pretty good gaming uh, distro after some tweaks. But... Uh, I would only recommend this to like maybe an aspiring Linux admin or someone that's mainly going to be using it for business, but they want to play the occasional game or two. So this isn't what I would recommend for like a hardcore gamer. But at the same time, if you just want to play a couple games and you want to stay on that distribution, Fedora is a great option. Now, next on the list is something I've never covered on this channel, and that's Solus. And Solus isn't based on any other distribution. They roll their own kernel and everything. So uh, they didn't just copy paste other stuff and uh, other people's work and then just start changing things. They literally, it's a whole distribution on its own. And it is even geared a little bit towards gaming because it has like Steam installed by default and all those things, which is really, really awesome. And side note, like Manjaro also has Steam installed by default. Uh, so you don't have to install a lot of those packages. And Solus is much the same way. Now it does use like everything you have to be on their website. It doesn't have much support. Therefore, I don't recommend it uh, for new users as you basically, if it's not on the Solus forums or Wikipedia, there's not very many people that use this distribution in comparison to uh, Manjaro or Pop! OS as it has a huge, huge uh, user base where Solus is not so big. Uh, but it's not to say it's a bad distro by any means. It is really unique and something that I'm keeping an eye on and I'll probably do a video someday about it. Uh, but I like to just kind of touch on the actual use of Linux and not so much focus on the distribution aspect as I think there's so many common things over Linux in uh all the distributions that you can pretty much talk about all the different pieces and that way it doesn't matter what distribution you're on a lot of my content's relevant to you because it doesn't matter if you're on arch or a debian based system all these just kind of apply which is cool so uh, that's why i don't really dive too much into like distribution reviews and those types of things that many other channels do i like to focus more on the positives of linux and just the pieces of linux uh, so it pretty much applies to everyone. Now last, it didn't get any votes, but I wanted to put it on the list, is MX Linux. And MX Linux is the closest thing to a user-friendly vanilla Debian experience, which means it's not like a fork of a fork, which is what like Pop! OS is. It's uh, Ubuntu's based on Debian, and then Pop! OS is based on Ubuntu. So that's what I call a fork of a fork, where MX Linux is 
pretty close to vanilla Debian. It just has a really nice interface and install options to where it gives you a decent starting place. I haven't covered it on this channel either, um, but it is a very good one. As most people know that I love vanilla Debian because of its stability and it is just amazing for those that just want to use their computer to work. Vanilla Debian's great, but I never recommend vanilla Debian for a gamer just because there's so much to configure and tweak to get it to a point where you're like, okay, cool, I can game on it now. It's a really bad starting point for many uh, gamers that don't know a whole lot about Linux as there's a ton of uh, system options and things you need to change really to tweak it to make it very viable for uh, mass gaming. So that's why I didn't put like Debian and other things on here. I also didn't put Ubuntu on here as most people don't know. I, I don't really care for Ubuntu as I, I don't like a lot of the packages that come with the, the OS and also from a gaming perspective, if you're wanting like an Ubuntu based distribution, I think that Pop! OS does a far better job, especially with a lot of the t system tweaks that they do to make it just a better starting point than Ubuntu. So that's my logic for leaving out some of these really big uh, distributions that you probably see everywhere of the best distribution to use. Well, when it comes to gaming, it's a different story altogether. And really, that's where I kind of just kind of pigeonhole everybody into these two options, where if you're an NVIDIA user, use Pop! OS. And if you're an AMD user, hey, try out Manjaro. Or if you want more of a stable experience, or you don't want to care uh, about being on the bleeding edge or having the latest and greatest packages, you can use Pop! OS as well. It's still a very good gaming system for AMD users. I just wanted to kind of put both of these out here because they're just fantastic options and will help you greatly. But with all that said, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. And as always, thank you to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.